This is AM 990 KWAM. And now, here's the Mary Beth Conley Show, a radio program that features discussions to help you expand your horizons, believe in your dreams, and live life large. Now, here's your host, Mary Beth Conley. And welcome to Faith Friday on the Mary Beth Conley Show here on AM 990 and KWAM 990.com. Let's play a little word association to start with today. If I say the word Muslim, what pops into your mind? Well, if you instantly think terrorism, then you may have been listening to the wrong talk radio stations. Stay with us here on AM 990 for Faith Friday, where we hope to inspire rather than incite and learn what Islam really is and what Muslims really believe from an American Christian who converted to Islam just two months after 9-11. Can you imagine the courage it took to follow your convictions at that point? It might seem like a controversial faith story at first. In fact, you might even feel a little uncomfortable about staying with us. But I promise if you do, you'll learn something new. We'll be back and get started in just a moment on the Mary Beth Conley Show. Now let's check traffic. Brought to you by GainDoyleFlowers.com. And welcome to the Mary Beth Conley Show on AM 990 and KWAM 990.com. And I'm going to give you another website real quick, Islamwitch.com. I-S-L-A-M, Islam, Witch, W-I-C-H. And Teresa Corbin is the founder of that website. She's a blogger who blogs there. And that's why I want you to go there to read her whole story, because this next 30 minutes will... Begin that story and intrigue you, but there may be more that you want to dig into. And, Teresa, that website is like you, one slice American, one right, slice right. Muslim? Exactly. But it's not to say that I'm half American, half Muslim. I'm right. all American and all Muslim. Right. But it's just, you know, where those intersectionalities take me and the interesting context that come out of it. You were raised a Roman Catholic. Yes, ma'am, I was. That's quite a journey from Roman Catholic parochial school for mm-hmm. most of your education yes. to Islam. Where did it start for you? Take, take me back. Where were you born? What kind of family in terms of your religion, uh, religious life right. did you have? Were you very religious, not so religious? That sort we of thing. were very religious. My mother was very devout. And I still t- tell people to this day that of anybody I've ever met, she was the most pious person I've ever met. And, you know, we prayed rosaries every time we traveled and went to mass Every time, Sundays, you know, the Fridays and Easter. So we were, you know, we were pretty religious. And that, I think that had a profound impact on me. So thinking about going into college and, you know, I wanted to know the broader perspective of the world. I wanted to know more because I had a pretty sheltered upbringing Mm -hmm. going to Catholic school, like small it was a suburb of New Orleans. So. Right. Did it ever occur to you? I mean, I I know when I was uh, in parochial school myself, we were taught it was the one true religion. Right. So did it ever occur to you during that time that there was anything else out there? Um, I knew about other sects of Christianity, but I had no idea there was such a thing as Islam. Mm-hmm. You know, I had heard all the stereotypes you get, like from Jafar and Aladdin. And like, anytime there's a news story from the Middle East, it's like, Oh, that's scary. What's happening over there? They're, right. So, you know, I had that kind of context, but I didn't know there was actually a religion called Islam. So, you know, when I was starting to study different cultures and different religions, when I, you know, starting at the age of 17, I went to college. Um, it was just like, okay, well, what do these people believe and what goes on in this culture? Just trying to be more open minded and understanding. Why were you searching? I was really. In my 15th year, if I can say it that way, sure. um, I started to question, you know, is Jesus really God? Because I had been told this and it just pops into my head um, thinking about the divinity of a man. And I didn't really get any answers from, you know, the nuns. I went to Catholic school and my parents, well, my father was agnostic, but, you know, my mother didn't really tell me. She's like, just have faith, just have faith. So studying like um, when I went to college, studying the... Roman Empire and, you know, the Greco-Roman gods and like seeing Zeus and Hercules and father-son dynamic in other, you know, pre-Christian faiths, um, it just kind of felt like that was adopted into it and went into Christianity. And when I came to um, read about it in Islam, 
it is that Jesus is just a prophet, a very highly honored prophet, mm-hmm. but you very strictly follow monotheism. You don't associate partners with God. And that just kind of felt right to me. You know, I I don't have any irreverence for Jesus, and I don't want anyone to be offended by that. But in, but the idea of the Trinity right. no longer worked for you. It, yeah. So And I, I felt like you know, that makes sense. There's one God. He created everyone solely by himself. Even Jesus was a creation of God, and we're all creations of God. So we have to, you know, devote our worship to the one creator. So forgive my ignorance. Muhammad, the prophet Muhammad, mm-hmm. is also just a prophet. Right, absolutely. Who, but but through whom we learn about the one true God. Right. And there are many prophets? Many prophets. Abraham, and Jesus Moses. Jesus is one of them. Yes. Oh, okay. Yes. Abraham so it's an was Abrahamic prophet. faith. Moses was a prophet. Right. Okay. Noah, Isaac. We have many of this, you know, the same prophetic. We believe they all came with the same message. Devote your worship to God alone. God gotcha. follow the example of the prophets. So it's just a lineage. And, they, you know, so and uh, Prophet Muhammad was the final prophet. And in the Christian Bible, there is um, Hagar, I believe. Correct. Hagar, yes. Is the mother of. Muhammad? No. No. He, she, Help um, me out with that. <laughs> because what my point is, is in the Christian Old mm-hmm. Testament, there are references right, that lead right. you to Islam. Mm-hmm. Yes. So um, the story of Hajar or Hagar, I can't. Yeah, however you pronounce, however it. You pronounce her name. We don't know. We're, it was, was years ago. <laughs> yeah, she was the um, the wife who was sent out into the desert. Right. And this is where in Islam she discovered the... Uh, water of Zamzam, which is a water that is still flowing today in Mecca. She, you know, she prayed to God to provide for her and her child. Right. She was the, uh, the handmaiden. The handmaiden, correct? right. When um, Sarah right. couldn't have children, right. decided to take matters into her own hands and give Abraham a child through her handmaiden, right. correct? Mm-hmm. But then got all upset. Right, as women sent, will do. Right, as women will do. Okay. <laughs> So here's the point. Right. Here in in um largely Christ, the Christian West, mm-hmm. we seem to think or seem to view Islam as being completely foreign from what we are taught and we right. we believe. And right. actually mm-hmm. it the 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 beginning of of Islam is in our Old Testament. Absolutely. And we believe in the Bible as well. We believe in the Torah as well. We just believe that it has been changed over time. We gotcha. can't find it in its original form, gotcha. but we can find the Quran in its original form. And it is nothing strange if you actually listen to all the tenets. It is, you'll find the same things in Judaism and Christianity. It's just that it's always bringing back to the one original message of God. So do you think American, it will, will what you just said just shock American Christians who have paid attention and learn, and feel like they've <laughs> learned only... Uh, through the news media, what mm. Muslims are and Muslims believe and, and uh, who they are. I hope it does in a good way. <laughs> That's all I can say. Um, yeah. um, we can't really learn religion from media. When have we ever said, I want to learn more about my faith. Let me turn on the news. Right. Or, And a lot of people are getting their information from Islamophobes, unfortunately, who distort this message so egregiously. When was the last time you said to yourself, I want to learn about the Jewish faith. Let me go to the neo-Nazi website. You're not going to learn. These are terrible sources. We need to go to the Muslims. You know, um, MuslimsInMemphis.org is a great place to start. You yes. can go to my blog, IslamWitch.com. Get a copy of the Quran. You know, read it. But part of the reason, I don't think people want to think badly of Muslims. Mm-hmm. Part of the reason there is that disconnect between what Islam really represents and what true Muslims really believe right. and our image is because of the Muslims, who, well, they right. call themselves Muslims, right. and I can only assume that they are, who have created terror in the world, and there are many of them. Mm-hmm. Uh, so we have to direct some of that frustration right. that I, f- I hear in your voice to them. Oh, yeah, we definitely do. It is of utmost importance, though, that we disassociate these people from Islam. They're seeking their legitimacy through Islam, and we need to take that legitimacy away from them. They may be Muslims. I don't know what's in their heart. Right. They're not practicing Islam. They are not practicing Islam. 
Um, let me use this analogy and ask you if this would be a good one or a bad one. Mm-hmm. If if Hitler, to bring him back into the conversation, right. were Catholic, right, and people associated his acts with Catholicism, absolutely, is that a good analogy? That's for a what's very happening? good analogy. There's also the KKK analogy that I like to use. They absolutely derive their thoughts and ideologies from the Christian faith, and this is bad representation of Christianity. You know, we. Um, we see compassion and peacefulness in Christianity. We don't see, you know, the KKK's ideology. But anybody who has been bereft of morality can take a text and twist it to their own agenda. Good point. Yeah. All right. We will be right back. What are the tenets of Islam? From Teresa Corbin. Uh, she's a New Orleans native. She has a website islamwitch.com that's her blog muslimsinmemphis.org is another great place to go for more information you know this show is all about imparting real information so I'm going to ask some really stupid questions because quite frankly I don't know a lot about Islam and Teresa grew up Catholic very Catholic I would say not Catholic light went to parochial school for the first nine years of your education yes ma'am right Mm-hmm. Or actually longer than that, because through ninth grade, that'd be about 10 years of your mm-hmm. education. Well, right? kindergarten through eighth, so that was Kindergarten nine through eighth. Okay, yeah. so nine years. Yeah. Um, and uh, regular mass. All the time, Bail whenever the there head, was. Well, ball. we didn't do Oh, you didn't mass. do that. You're too yeah. young for that. <laughs> I did that. Uh, <laughs> My mother would, would yeah. tell us about that. They had to wear Absolutely. it every Sunday. But two months after 9-11, she converted to Islam. And that timing in and of itself um, might make you go, ooh. So we'll talk about that in just a moment. It's a Faith Friday that, okay, I get. It might make you feel a little uncomfortable. We need to get uncomfortable mm-hmm. before we can learn. Yep. So stay right there on the Mary Beth Conley Show on AM 990 and KWAM 990.com. Your Friday forecast on the Mary Beth Conley Show shall I. Plus tax title license with approved credit includes all dealer manufacturer rebates, PF1 and 875 off of balance the end of the month. Just not only. And welcome back to the Mary Beth Conley Show on AM 990 and KWAM990.com. My guest is Teresa Corbin of New Orleans. She is a Muslim convert uh, for 13 years now. Is that correct? Going on 14, yeah. Going on 14. Converted two months after 9-11. And that timing had to make this decision a bit tough on your family. Were they worried? They were very worried. Were you worried? I was terrified, but, you know, I... I know that I can't make life decisions based on what other people are going to think. I have to make myself happy and right with my God. So, yeah. yeah. So we learned a little bit about your story growing up a a rather strong Catholic and just questioning whether or not um, we could view God in Trinity, basically. Mm -hmm. If, if man, you know, Jesus really could be God. Mm -hmm. Uh, Islam considers Jesus to be one of the prophets. Correct. correct, Along with Abraham. Moses, Noah, Isaac, and all the rest. All the big names. David, was he a prophet? Yep. All the big names in the Bible. Okay. (laughs) So let's talk about the tenets of Islam. Since this radio show is is going to, our our goal here is to help you understand that you can't base your belief about Islam on the nightly news. Thank you. On visuals and stories about Mm -hmm. ISIS. Mm -hmm. Because they are, in any religion, bad people. And Absolutely. I don't know if they're Muslim or not. Right. But they call themselves that. And that's your PR, your religion's PR problem, I guess. Right. Yes. And it's a big one. It is. So what are the tenets of Islam? To be a Muslim, you believe that God is one strictly. He is the creator of all things. He is not in need of partner. Okay. So no you, trinity. No trinity. Okay. You believe in the prophets from Adam, Moses, Abraham, down the line to Prophet Muhammad. Peace and blessings be upon them all. And what do you believe the prophets were sent to do? Some prophesies about what was coming? Um, not necessarily, but to as an example of how we should behave, of how God okay. wants us to live in this world and treat each other. Okay, so Jesus was one of he was a an number example, of prophets. Okay. Right, for mankind. So. Okay. Would he be like the senior VP of prophets? Was he Jesus? a bigger one? He yeah. was, yes. Okay. He was a very honored prophet. Trying to put he's this a in big guy. language. Okay, he's a <laughs> yeah. big guy. Okay, All yeah. Right. What's another tenet? Um, Belief in the books. We believe in the Torah, the Quran, and the Bible, but we believe that the Quran is the reliable source because it has been preserved over 1,400 years. Yes, when you say Mm -hmm. that the the 
Bible has been changed. What do you mean by that? Mm-hmm. And the well, Torah we can't find changed. it in its original language okay. or text. So all the translations right. by human beings right. would, by definition, bring someone's frame of reference in. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Interesting. Man's interpretation. I mean, that kind of makes logical sense mm-hmm. that one would would believe that since we can't find the original books, and mm-hmm. I'm sure there's some dispute about that. Oh, there is, yeah. Okay. Gosh, there's dispute about everything yeah. re- regarding well, it, religion. If Even if there is dispute, it doesn't mean that we can't respect each other and have compassion. Right, right. So we disagree. Maybe we don't have to believe the same things to be friends and be neighbors, right? Right. right. We can both, I as a Christian and you as a, as a Muslim, mm-hmm. can both believe that what Jesus taught, whether he is God, as I believe, mm-hmm. or whether he is a prophet, as you believe, mm-hmm. what he taught is what's important. Right. Is that the essence of what you would hope people would get? Right. His message was vitally important. Absolutely. And okay. we do believe that it's the same message that Prophet Muhammad came with, even though their um, roles in this world were different because Jesus didn't come as a leader. The Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, came as a leader. Okay. So they had different roles to play, even though their message was the same. Okay. I notice every time when you say a name of a prophet, yes. you say peace and blessings. Be upon him. Yeah. Is that one of the, I don't like the word rules, but is that one of the things you are taught to do? It's kind of one of the, it like, is, for yeah. instance, in the in Catholicism, we cross ourselves right, before right. praying. Uh-huh. I mean, it's not like you have to do it. Somebody's going to. Beat you if you don't, <laughs> right. but it's a sign of respect, and you know Muslims okay. have ultimate respect for the prophets. They all suffer greatly, okay, in delivering their message. Okay. And many of them were killed, and you know, just because they had people didn't like what they were saying, were challenging their power. So you know that that's such a noble thing to do, to deliver God's message even in face of all this, you know, animosity and hatred. So we have great reverence and respect for all the prophets. Okay. Um, some other tenets. Okay. So we talked about monotheism, right. prophets, the books. Right. We believe in the angels. Okay. Like Angel Gabriel. They all have different roles to play. Angel Gabriel was the one who brought the um, sacred texts to the prophets, like Moses received. Right. From uh, the Torah, of course, he spoke directly with God. So a lot of Christians also believe in angels. Right, yes. And yeah. saints. We also have saints. Do we don't believe saints? in saints. Okay. We don't pray to anything but God alone. Right, right. No, we do believe that there are some people who have, like scholars or something, who have benefited the world greatly. But we don't believe that they can intercess, intervene for us between God. Everybody right. has a personal relationship and personal um responsibility okay but even within the christian faith there are all there's an awful lot of people who do not believe right. in the catholic belief uh-huh. that we could pray for instance to saint christopher right. before traveling right patron saint of you know it sounds to me like people they're like the differences are really academic mm-hmm. and perhaps behavioral you for instance your religion teaches that women wear a headscarf right mm-hmm. um why a lot of people don't understand that right um, people think, I think it's a Western idea that women are forced to put, to dress modestly. Right. By, by the men. Right. No, no, thank you. Who don't want their wives looked at. <laughs> right. Is that what the right. Westerners think? It's exactly right. <laughs> like they're trying to oppress them and like they can't express themselves. We should have done a true and false show on this actually. Oh, man, I would have probably nice. failed. I would have given the Western <laughs> viewpoint. I, I don't know if I would have passed, but. <laughs> okay. So that is not true. It is the women's choice. It is the women's choice. Now, of course, there are people who do force this on women and that is a no-no. Again, the Taliban. Right, big, the Taliban big and even Saudi Arabia. Hopefully, they are not listening. <laughs> well, maybe they should be. Maybe they should be. So it, there, it is a law. It is a law, and, and it, women can be punished for not. I don't know if there's a punishment, it? but in true, or at but least, it's, yeah, that everyone has to frowned upon. Right. So in true Islam, mm-hmm. it is a it is a choice made by the women for their own belief that right. they should appear. Before well, God. yes, to please God, Respect. because he asks us okay. to, first and foremost, that's why we do anything. Okay. Um, to be recognized as believing women, like we see Mary, we see nuns, and we see them covered, not any more than nuns, 
Right. Some of them do actually still do that. Yeah, but, but not very many. Here in America, honey, we're taking it all off, I swear. <laughs> but so it's kind of like uh, Christians are very fond of saying you should let your light shine. Right. It's, right. it's, a sim- it's an outward symbol so uh-huh. that I know you are a f- woman of woman. Right. Of and it is a reminder to me. And it's not just a dress. Sense. It is an attitude of modesty, humility, and, you know, reminding yourself you're, you know, at all times and other people as well that you are a woman who believes you're a woman of faith. Gotcha. And there is a modesty element as well. We don't feel like, well, in my personal experience, because I can't speak to anybody else's experience. Right. When I I converted when I was 21, I never felt more liberated or, you know, I never felt empowered by dressing with tight clothes or less clothing. Right. I always felt picked apart and judged and on display, you know, available for anyone to look at. And it rendered me with so low self-confidence and having ownership over my body and allowing people what I want to see and not being for public consumption. Yeah. And they actually did a study on this, that women who do cover and wear hijab, as we call it in Islam, have higher self-esteem. Really? Yeah. It's amazing. Because you're in control. You're in control who sees you. Not you don't That's want all the Tom Dick and Harry's ogling you at all times. You know right. you get to say who sees what. And again, there is a there there are those Christians who feel very strongly about that as well. Mm-hmm. Um, so no, we don't wear head scarves, mm-hmm. but. That's that's very interesting. Um, again, it's it's all about just asking questions. Right. Yeah. Do you? And I know you welcome those questions. Oh yeah. You can email me at islamwitch at yahoo.com okay. or go to the muslimsinmemphis.org website and they take questions as there as well. And this month is um, a special month here in the Memphis area. If you are, it's a, it's a month-long celebration uh, by Muslims in Memphis, in fact, and there's a number of events, um, comedians coming in. It's, it's an effort to, and, and Teresa was here recently to do a, a talk, um, it's an effort to just open up the dialogue. And yep. feel comfortable um, just asking, yeah. guys, you know, quit making assumptions in your head based on what you see on the news and then judging others without any basis at all. Please. Um, <laughs> Please yeah. stop doing that. <laughs> really? There's really no point, for one thing. Yeah. It's complete ignorance. So um, MuslimsInMemphis.org is a great website. More on Teresa's story, because I do want to go back to that day okay. in 2001 right. when you actually converted. And, and how you, I'm sure you encountered some naysaying. Um, and how you withstood that. Because whether it's a decision to convert... Um, at a very painful time in U.S. history, uh, to a religion that wrongly or rightly people associated with the awful events of 9-11. Mm-hmm. And, and I know it was it was wrong, but mm-hmm. if people associate with it, with it, they're going to come at you right. and really challenge your decision. Mm-hmm. So whether it's that big decision or whether it's a smaller decision in your life, how do you withstand criticism and cruelty and fear? How do you go forward in what you know you need to do when it's difficult. We'll be right back. More with Teresa Corbin. Plus tax title license with approved credit includes all dealer manufacturer rebates, PF4 and an 75 off of value to end of the month. Peter Stock only. Welcome back to the Mary Beth Conley Show on AM 990 and KWAM 990.com. It is Faith Friday, and we're talking with Teresa Corbin of New Orleans, who... Um, two months after 9-11, converted from Catholicism to Islam. And I can hear the big drop-dead silence right then, two months <laughs> after 9-11. That yeah. had to be a, I know it was a major decision because you yeah. had been studying Islam for some yeah, time. I had. Mm-hmm. You had a college roommate who had converted. Yep. And you yourself had many of the misconceptions that Westerners have yes. about Muslims, mm-hmm. correct? Yes, ma'am. You believed the whole terrorist Terrorist equals Muslim. Right. And who, <laughs> in 1998, where who, where was I getting that from? I don't even know. <laughs> yeah, right. Well, probably just because it's in the fabric. And right. even more so now. I mean, right. let's Big all time. face it. Mm-hmm. ISIS t- is terrifying. Yes. To you, to yes. me, the Taliban is terrifying. I will to tell you, you something. To me, what? They're more likely to want to kill me than you. Why? Because I speak against them. Mm. And I represent... Islam, that 99.99% of Muslims represent, that is against them. 
So, you know, they want to silence me. And like Yasser Qadi, they have threatened him with death because he speaks out against them. That makes sense. Yeah. So how hard was it for you as a very young, 21? 21. Very young American girl, Catholic, raised by a devoutly Catholic mother. Yes. To tell your mother you were converting. Well, that's a that's a sad story. Um, she had actually passed away a few years before I converted when wow. I was 18. Did that play into your It did. Decision? It reminded me of mortality. As well, she passed away when I was 18. Mm-hmm. So, you know, there was as an 18-year-old you're not thinking about that. Right. So, that was a you're reminder. You're going to live forever. Right. Exactly. You could do whatever you want and it's going to be okay. You'll just spring back up. Right. Uh, so that was a a shaking of the foundation really. Like Examine your life because it's not going to be forever. And she was very young. She was in her mid-40s. So that sounds like was part of your, um, the beginning of your faith, your questioning of your Absolutely. faith. Absolutely. Yeah. Yes. And I actually was an agnostic for four years before I converted. So, you know, I kind of like, okay, well, I'm not really Catholic. I'm questioning now. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, yeah. Were you questioning any of the rules? Uh, Catholicism does have quite a few rules. You know, no birth control. No, you know, right, there's just a right. whole. Uh, did that make you question, or was it just the idea of the Trinity that that mm-hmm. while there's one God, Jesus is also God, right, and right. the Holy Spirit is you know it's a triune God. Mm-hmm. Um, well, um, it was mostly that, but there was the issue of original sin that I didn't. I wasn't getting down with that. <laughs> <laughs> what do you mean? Um, that to think that a child can be born with the sin of someone else. Okay, when, so that is not a tenet of the no, Muslim faith. Absolutely not. Interesting. No, no. Yes, we're all responsible for our own souls. We don't carry the sins of anyone else, and they can't carry our sins for us. So, is there a baptism into Islam of that sorts, cleanses you? Of sorts. Well, you, know, you wouldn't cleanse you because you don't have the sin. But right. I mean. To initiate someone as a Muslim, they just make a statement of faith. Okay. And that, you know, to say it sincerely and publicly, that they believe that God is God and he has no partners, and that Prophet Muhammad is his messenger, and that's it. Okay. And you're a Muslim. To say that sincerely, of your own volition, not forced, you can't be coerced, because that takes sincerity out of it. Without sincerity, there is no faith. Okay. So... There's not like some big ceremony where everybody knows their parts because that's a no. little bit artificial. Right. If Rituals. Really, mm, yeah. If it's yeah. really authentic, yeah. you just do it. Right. So what you're saying, what I'm hearing is that we believe in the same God, Christians yes. and Muslims. Yes. It's just that we also throw Jesus in there. Right. And we totally, probably, most of us, unless we really study the Bible, don't realize that Hagar, the whole Hagar, Abraham, that that, you know, that was it wasn't the beginning of muslim of the muslim faith right. and i'm really massacring the, this well thing. no it's fine it's it's difficult because <laughs> it's the I'm split of the the arab and the um hebrews so that's where that split begins and right um when prophet muhammad peace and blessings be upon him were deliver was delivering his message to the people of this area the jews recognized him as a prophet but they said they thought he would come from their people and not the Arabs. So that was a stumbling block for them. Gotcha. They felt like he should be, you know, Judaic uh, Hebrew. So how much of our confusion and, and ill at ease state is political in nature? I would say all of it. Boy, that, <laughs> boy, that's sad. Yeah. And I would like to point out, you know, that there are countries who call themselves Muslim who say that they have Sharia law. But veer so far away from Islamic values and principles and rules. Give me an example. Saudi Arabia uh, doesn't okay. allow women to drive. There is nothing, nowhere, and I've been looking for it for 10 years because I'm <laughs> keeping an open mind, right? Maybe, well, sure, I can have a chauffeur and a limo. Great. Right. <laughs> but and you're a feminist. And so I am you, a feminist, yeah, yes. You're concerned about women's uh, right. equality. Right. So I'm thinking, okay, well, if this is a law of God, I have to follow that. But this is nowhere. And in fact, in Islam. I printed out some because a law Sharia law is another mm-hmm. thing that, oh, the, yeah. that some in the media in right? the West 
have made us believe that, oh, my God, they all want us to believe in sh- or follow Sharia law, be under <laughs> Sharia law, I think is the term. What is Sharia law? Sharia law is uh, literally translated means the way to the watering hole. Okay. It is a way of life. Which are the waters that are still flowing in Mecca? Is that the water? No, the, I mean the watering hole, like where you get your sustenance and life from. Okay. Because we're – In general sense. In okay. general sense, yes. Okay. Um, so it's just – it's a personal law. And it can be applied to government as well. So in my life, you know, this is going to be scary for people to hear it, but don't be afraid. I do practice Sharia law. What that means is I wear hijab. Mm-hmm. I pray five times a day. Right. I, you know, I every try day. to every day. I don't lie. I follow the rules of the land in which I live. And that is a part of Sharia law. That, if that doesn't you, sound so scary. No, I practice my religion. So, And that's what Sharia law says. Right. <laughs> it's been so um it's been really uh mistranslated it indeed has in and i actually wrote media. a blog post about it sure it's called the sharia creep so yes. if you go to my blog and <laughs> i saw that and actually. search that i mean <laughs> you be prepared to be entertained because <laughs> there is no way a threat to american government the sharia is just not it's no muslim <laughs> No Muslim organization has ever attempted to overthrow the U.S. government and establish Sharia. I don't even know how that would work (laughs) because even non-Muslims living in Muslim lands, it is an Islamic law that they're allowed to practice their own religious laws and their own laws. So they're not not obliged to practice Sharia if they're not Muslim. So how are we get percentage of the population in the U.S. is Muslim? Two percent. So as two percent, do you think that majority, (laughs) that majority two percent is going to. And actually, if those are the tenets of Sharia law, I mean, I don't have any problem with not lying. And actually, I'm thinking just from a uh, I hate to do hair point of view. (laughs) I'm thinking I've had uh, that comment. I headdress really. Yeah. That kind of works. It's liberating. (laughs) It's liberating. (laughs) We'll be right back. Um and I don't mean to make light of this, no, no. but honestly, and that isn't that do. complicated, people. Can no. we just stop judging everybody? Thank you. I mean, we'll be right back. More with Teresa Corbin. She was Catholic. She is Muslim. And her website is Islam, which the, for some reason that is hard for me to say. I want to say, I don't know. I want to put the emphasis somewhere else. Uh, it's Islam <laughs> Just think of the sandwich. Witch. Just think Islam of the sandwich. Witch. Yeah. One slice American, one slice Muslim. You'll get some great information. I know I did. I mean, I've been a member of the media since 1982, and i got to be honest. I really didn't know much about um, Islam at all, except that it was a peaceful religion. I did know that. Um, but there's a lot more to it. We'll be right back on the Mary Beth Conley Show. Your Friday forecast on the Mary Beth Conley Show, showers and thunderstorms. The U.S. Department of Health and Human Services and the Ad Council. And welcome back to the Mary Beth Conley Show on AM 990 and KWAM990.com. A really interesting discussion of what Islam is all about with Teresa Corbin, who is an American, a former Catholic, who converted to Islam two months after 9-11. Talk about timing. In the West, we have so many beliefs about Muslims, and there's a lot of fear that is frankly um, built up by certain um, parts of our media um, and maybe our own minds when we see legitimate and real newscasts mm-hmm. that are objective showing things like the, the terror of right, ISIS right. and the horrible acts. And, and, you know, we see that they're in the Middle East. And so thus we associate that right, with right. Islam because Middle Eastern countries by and large are Muslim. Not they all. They are, but only 20 percent of the world's Muslim population comes from Arab countries. Now, that's Interesting a to know, statistic right? I did Plus not know. Plus 10% of Arabs are Christian. Yes, that's true. Yeah. I did know that. Yeah. So what can we do? What's the best thing to do to help people bridge the gap and bridge mm-hmm. the divide? We really have to do this, yes. in my view. Yes. Because where ISIS is, and I, I'm just, I keep throwing them out there because they're the current right. you know, terrorists horrifying. that we fear the most. Right. And they are horrifying. They are. Um, and they will win. If we allow them to throw a wedge between people. Right. That's And I think that that is their goal, is to bring people further apart. Yes. And they're succeeding. They and unfortunately, succeeding. there are extremes in our country who are doing that as well. The point is we have to 
eliminate the extreme point of view from our narrative. Because we're all human beings. We can get along. We can believe different things. This is fine. But we can also have compassion for each other. We can't listen to these groups. Extremists telling us to be fear and hate the Muslims. I don't want anybody to be afraid of me. Right. I especially don't want people to hate me. You're kind of cute, but you're not really uh, scary. <laughs> <laughs> people are afraid of me. This is crazy. They see your headdress. And well, right. I mean, we see examples of that, for instance, in airports, um, right. you know, mm-hmm. where we there is profiling. Right, right. And it's right. just as bad to profile someone wearing a headdress. Mm-hmm. Oh, my God, she's Muslim. She must be a terrorist. Right. I mean, that's horrible. It, it's a horrible thought. It, it's also illogical. It's degrading. It, it, have you felt that? Have you been a victim of that? Not in airports. Like, people in airports are super awesome to me for some reason. I'm like, hey, guys, what's going on? Yeah. I actually got an expedited uh, security on my way to Memphis. Really? So but they do not make you remove your headdress and no, check well, for they weapons can't. or they whatever they can't? Well, this, this you know, if they law? took me in a in a back room with a female attendant, fine. Okay. I'm, I'm okay. cool with but that. But you haven't felt that. Where do Mm-mm. you feel profiled? Well, you know, I lived in Savannah for a short period of time, and I received a lot of hateful comments just on the street. You know, people flipping me off and um, even in Mobile, Alabama, it was like this, but especially in Savannah, I think there are pockets of it in cities where it creates an atmosphere. Is it because you are clearly a Westerner, your your features, your... I don't think people see past this. Really? I don't, because they expect me not to speak English or to have an accent. Like, I have a degree in English, people. <laughs> <laughs> I probably don't massacre the language as much as you do, right? <laughs> no. um, I mean, but but when I when I look at you, you look very Western in nature. So I just right, wondered right. if some of that mm-hmm. um, that negativity was, was because people felt like you had rejected. It could be. You know? It could be. In favor of. Maybe. But I get a lot of go back home, and I'm like, I live 10 miles from the hospital <laughs> I was born in. I, I don't think they want me there. <laughs> Right? Home is the South, people. Right. Wow. Y'all. <laughs> what is your biggest takeaway that you want people to take from this program? That Muslims aren't scary. You know, don't fear and hate something just because you don't understand it. We can live in a plural society with mutual respect. And something I'm going to talk about in my speech um, is that we don't just have to have tolerance because that's something a toddler does when he eats his vegetables so he can have his dessert. It's something you do when you don't really like it. We can have mutual respect. We just have to get to know each other. So email me, go to the mosque, get a Quran, find out for yourself because the media and the Islamophobic lobby in this country are terrible sources yeah. of religious information. You're not trying to convert anyone to no, your belief. No. You just want to coexist. Exactly. And that's kind of what America was designed to precisely enable us to do yeah if you don't believe that read thomas jefferson's quran it's a book recently written by a historian about all the things that went into the making of the country and how they specifically wanted to include muslims and jews interesting yes where do we find that book i can get on amazon i forget the author but i recently read it thomas jefferson's quran interesting yeah so here's the point guys this is just to intrigue you, to pique your interest, and to get you exploring. You know, I'm Christian. I have no plans to convert. I am not, um, you know, I don't want the angry emails. I can't believe you <laughs> you let her on your show. Uh, because, quite frankly, I, I think we have to discuss this. We have to sit down and talk about the differences. Right. And I've just learned over the, over the last hour that we have more in common yeah. than we have uh, different right. between us and our bodies. growing is always uncomfortable. Yeah, so we just need to grow a little. Thank you so much. Here's a great website for you to go to for more information as well. Muslims in Memphis. And this month in March, there's a lot of um, uh, of events that you are invited to. Please come out and learn and don't be afraid. Nobody's going to tie you to a chair and make you follow Sharia law. <laughs> now that you know that Sharia law was really not as scary as you thought it was. Um, and you could also go to Teresa's blog or website, islamwitch.com. And uh, thank you so much. Thank you for, for having me on, time. sincerely. Right. It's been great. <laughs> it's been great to meet you. We'll talk to you later, and we will see you guys on Million Dollar Monday. Have a great weekend.